Hi there everyone, I'm Michelle Pekansky brock and I'm here today in a Google Plus Hangout with Deborah Lemon. And um, Deborah teaches online and she teaches with Facebook. How are you doing today, Deborah? Really good. How are you doing? I'm doing good. Now I shouldn't say you teach with Facebook because you actually teach with a course management system, right? No, actually, I don't. I actually don't. teach out of Facebook. Oh, so this is even more interesting to me then. For some reason, I thought you enhanced your course management system with Facebook. So, wow, that's actually very interesting to me. Okay, um, so as you know, I teach a class called Building Online Community with Social Media. And so we look at lots of different tools that can be kind of infused into the college learning experience. And um, obviously, Facebook is really kind of where students are today and so one of this is one of the tools that a lot of faculty really want to they're kind of curious they want to understand you know what's valuable about using Facebook in teaching um, and I know that you're someone who's had a lot of success with it and so we're here today just to kind of have that conversation um, so before we take a look at what you're doing in Facebook do you want to share and just kind of reflect with us about why you're using Facebook I I teach Spanish as well as educational technology so um, it's challenging already because it's a physical skill and I had to do some traveling a couple years ago. i had been using it as a side activity in my in-person classes but when I was traveling I realized with the time difference I was going to have trouble staying in touch with my students and I was already searching for the right forum that I wanted for a highly interactive um, online class and so I created a Facebook group where I could stay in touch with them until I figured out what else I was going to do. And over a period of about two weeks, I realized I had already found what I needed because of the high level of interaction and the actual immediacy of the contact uh, and the interaction. So it actually turned me from where I was going to now looking at Facebook and developing it further. And when you say interaction, I assume that it was really that audiovisual element, the rich media part of it that was so important for you t in terms of teaching a foreign language, right? Yes. Yeah. Yes. The, the fact that I, we could actually hear each other speaking and see each other through video, but also they would uh, ask and answer questions within the group between among themselves uh, it wasn't they didn't have to constantly come to me for information and then I'd have to try to redisseminate the information it was being posted right in our group as though we were in a classroom and people would respond right at that time so you noticed a lot more frequency in terms of engagement mm -hmm. with the students probably because of the fact that they were already logged into Facebook and doing other things there yes okay okay great um, so with that said do you want to give us a peek sure let me show you what I felt <laughs> Um, first let me get you on the screen share. Okay. Okay, there we go. Um, I've got a couple of groups. I'm going to show you a, a current group that I have right now. Uh, this is actually my hybrid class. Um, so we do actually meet uh, one day per week. Um, but group, first of all, What's really nice about the groups is I can make the group private, which means that no one can see it except for the people who are in it. And this reproduces pretty much a classroom sense of security where you're not going to have strangers watching or posting. There are several tools inside of a group uh, that I use to make it interactive. First of all, the basic is posting. For example, we have a quiz coming up and I just posted, don't forget to do the challenge boards for practice. And I can put the link right in there. Um, and this reminds them of activities that they need to do outside of the class. Um, add photo or video. This one I can upload photos or videos or screencasts that I want them to see. Uh, I can also use the webcam feature where if I want to record something live to broadcast to them or have them do activities and I'll show you an activity in a moment. Um, the other is ask a question which is like a poll feature and that's if I need to know something very quick. For example, I have two different options for when to take the final exam. I might say, are you coming Monday morning or are you coming Wednesday night? And I can get a quick poll of everybody uh, of when they're coming so I have an idea of how many tests to make. And the most important one, add a file. This has been expanded with the addition of Dropbox, which is wonderful. I can upload PowerPoints. Wow. I can upload Word docs, um, Excel spreadsheets. Um, I can upload PDFs. So. Uh, I can now drag them 
from my Dropbox, and the students are finding this more useful because they can in turn drag them down to their Dropboxes and, to actually download. And for those of uh, those who might be watching this who don't know what Dropbox is, could you explain that real briefly? It's uh, like a repository for your files that's on the web. It's something that you can drag files from your desktop into what they call your Dropbox, but then it's located uh, on a on a web basis where you can then move it. I'm probably explaining this very poorly. <laughs> yeah, it's it's it, well, it's and it's free. It's, it's too. like a mailbox. You get a you get a really big chunk of cloud-based storage for free right. with Dropbox, right? I was afraid to use the word cloud-based storage. <laughs> um, <laughs> Yes, exactly. So it, instead of having to upload directly from your computer, it's much faster. You can simply drag a file to that mailbox, and then from that mailbox, you can just move it straight over um, on, onto Facebook without having to go through the, the, the tedious process of uploading, which can take time. And sometimes has a file limit as well. As you can see here, maximum size 25 megs, so um, it's, it's a little different. Um, with... Uh, the other features that are really useful, events. I use events to broadcast when we have tests, quizzes, or homework activities. Because this is a hybrid class, I'm only uh, creating events for the actual test days. Okay. But if I switch to my online class and we look under events, you'll see there's also webcam assignments, self-test and video quizzes, um, chapter tests, any major assessment project, I will use the events as a reminder because it sends them a notification and I do it about two days before the deadline and it pops up for them and then they also, as you'll notice, 40 other guests, um, they do RSVP. That's one way I keep track of what my students do is that they have to RSVP to these events so that I know that they were notified. Interesting. Um, Can I ask a quick question? Mm -hmm. So, um, okay, so I, I'm wondering if... I, I'm trying to think without the course management part of it, how do you how do you deal with the um, communication of, of grade the grading element using Facebook as the teaching platform? What I have the students do, I keep a constant tally as their projects come in. I basically split the screen between Facebook and Excel and I'm literally just moving grades over. They message me anytime they want to know their grade because I keep it so current. So if they want to know how they did with the homework, the online homework, that gives them instant feedback. It's set to tell them their grade the minute they finish. They get feedback, they can correct it, then they get their scores. With the tests, they run the same way, the online tests, they get immediate feedback, and then once the test is closed to everybody, they can go get their scores, and that's the next morning. Um, overall grade, they just send me a message requesting it because I can't spontaneously send it to them. Um, and we've had different grade uh, softwares that we've used in the past, and then they fold, and so it just seemed easier for me to just make that something that they contact me and we discuss. Mm -hmm. And that way I can say, oh, you're doing great work, keep it up. Or, yeah, on this one, um, you know, here's where you are overall, here's how you can improve that. In terms of their scoring on webcam uh, projects, yeah. uh, I give them the feedback right away. I watch their webcam. If it's at least a passing project, then they get a thumbs up. Uh, they get a like. I see. Then I put some type of small comment underneath it, and then I send them a message about what they did well or what they need to work on. So it's all I do it all at once. I see. So they get more of a, a gen generalized kind of feedback through the interface, and then the kind of the the granular grade goes into your 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 Excel spreadsheet. Right. Okay. So this is the fully online class, and you can see every day I run a pregunta, which is a question about the chapter. It's nothing that's very difficult. It's a one-sentence answer. It's either totally correct or it's not. And you can see that Sonia just posted her answer, and it's grammatically correct. And so I would simply like it, and I go back in at some point during the day, and I put all the ones to showing that they are participating. So I use the posts for very short and specific and concrete activities. Um, I use the poll for quick answers. And then again, um, let me see if I can find you a good example. Oh, here, here's another post where I have them like something. In this case, I said I may be demoing this class. If you're all right with that, give it a thumbs up. If you're not, message me so that I know who not, mm -hmm. uh, not to show. 
So uh, I can keep records in that way too. Uh huh. Um, and awards for best work. So Very let me cool. go back and show you just for an example a project, and then I want to get to what I love about um, Facebook in general in terms of its ability. So here's a project that we just did, and they can message us in. Hopefully, it's not going to be too loud. Me llamo Ojo. Me llamo Nizzy. Me llamo Jamie. Soy amable. Soy optimista. Soy ambiciosa. Hoy estoy contento. Hoy estoy feliz. Hoy estoy alegre. So you can see this is an example of the kind of project, and they build basically an e-portfolio with these. As we go through the semester, I can watch their how their pronunciation and how their vocabulary and grammar grows, mm -hmm. and they can see it as well. What makes it easy is I can search it using the search function. Um, I can find people in the group if I want to see one student's progress. I can also do the same by going under photos, and I can search for a specific video that a specific group or individual posted. Mm, yeah, the, I can see a lot of features here that uh, it's making me wonder why course management systems don't do these things, <laughs> it, it, <laughs> which is a it, thought I, I have a lot of the time. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that Facebook, you know, would, would, would be like right on that educational platform, but um, I mean, I've spoken to them many, many times, and I know they were trying to come out with their groups for education. I haven't been able to see those because as a community college, our students do not have an email uh, with an aloni.edu extension, which is what's required, and they're just prototyping it. But mm -hmm. the nice thing is some of my students are at private schools as well as taking classes with me, and I'm able to see how their educational groups are functioning. But they, they haven't really caught on yet, but I think once educators see how powerful this is, I think it's going to be more attractive. Yeah, you've um, pointed out a lot of pretty pretty cool features here. Um, I particularly really like the fact that you can sort the content by individual students. Yes. Um, I think that's that's really powerful. So can the students do that also? Yes. Okay. Because I think that's actually, that adds a lot of value to the student learning experience when they can come in, for example, at the end of a term and, and pull up everything that they've done. I think that there's a real, that's what I actually usually like about build, having students build a blog because they see, you know, their progress kind of accumulate over the semester. And that's really kind of the same thing that you're, that you're stressing here. Yes. And I'm going to just do it. Let's see. In fact, I'm going to do a search right now. Um, because I don't want to have to do that scroll down. So here I can see all of the posts that he did, mm -hmm. and I want to go see this one. And so here's his project. And what I do with the students is I have them create projects, and their grade, a very, very small part of it, is on the project. The big grade is they have to go look at the other students and review them, and if they think that they're perfect, or they really, they're perfect and super creative, they like it. And if they find something that's not correct, then they have to put a comment underneath it, and they get extra credit for that. So if they notice a correction oh, nice. mistake, uh, then they actually get credit for helping the other student redo it. So in this case, he had redone it, because he did say must make corrections, and so that means he obviously had redone this exercise. <laughs> Um, so there's ways to keep exercises interactive at that level. It's not just them submitting a project, but it's them working with each other. Mm. See, I always, I always think to myself that if we taught with different tools, it would change the way we teach. Do you agree with that? Um, I think. I mean, do in you, some ways, do yes. You... In some ways, no. I think the, for me, the whole basis of education and teaching is the idea of is getting an idea and growing it. And so communication, obviously, is the way to do that. I think this is just a slightly different type of communication. But let me ask you something. I, I don't know if I said that right, because I don't want okay. I don't want I don't want to actually say what I mean differently. I completely believe that pedagogy has to come before a tool. But do you think that as you've gotten your arms more into Facebook, I mean, did it start with one intent? And then as you started teaching with it more and more, did, did all of these different t different ways that you could use it start to blossom and kind of have roots and new dimensions? Did you? Yes. That's yes. what I mean. I mean, Absolutely. and so when I start to think Absolutely. about, you know, everyone or most college instructors teaching with, you know, particular platforms, I just start to wonder how different college teaching would look 
if we were all teaching with something completely different, right? Because the, mm -hmm. the tools that we have in front of us do inform our options and do inform how creative we can be and, you know, the, the ideas that we start to grow and, and emerge in our teaching. So, yeah, that's a, that's a thought that I often have with my own teaching. I, I think what got me really started on this was a student had to miss a week of class and she went on a cruise and it was in Mexico and she took videos of her having conversations with people on the ship in Spanish mm -hmm. and she started posting it in our group and I realized right then this is education already this is where it needs to be we, we need to be out out there yeah. and not not in a classroom not seated in a chair but I want my students to be out in the real world and learning while they're moving yeah. and this lets them do it in fact when you uh, messaged me through Google I got it on my phone at yeah. the dog park and that's, that was that's why I messaged you through Google by the way and not email <laughs> And that is the way to, I mean, that is literally the way to do it yeah. because that, and that's what I want them to do. And I was trying to find a video that one of my students just posted um, about her. Uh, she was working at a food bank. Here we go. She was working at a food bank and she just posted this to her group. And she was very excited because okay, we were on the food chapter. So what she had done was hidden her phone in the back and then was filming herself interacting with the Spanish that we had just learned in class. Mm, and beautiful. to me that's that's the high point. That's what I'm that's what I'm looking for. Absolutely. Yeah, and it says a lot about the just the yeah, the mobility, the the fluidity of that the technology is just fluid and connected with the mobility, which is the way that more and more of our students are learning. So um, I, I can hear the voices inside my head of many people who are going to be viewing this. And one of the number one um, concerns that I hear from faculty mm -hmm. when I talk about using Facebook is, well, what if my students, what if I have a student or a few students who aren't on Facebook and who do not want to create a Facebook account. So I'm very open with the idea that I will be using a Facebook to teach my classes. So we offer sections that don't use it if you really uh, do not want to use Facebook. And this is what I was looking for, an example of a student. So as you can see at the top where the members photographs are for the group, on the far left, there's just a profile that's empty. It's grayed out with a white female profile. Sure. That's a student who did not want to have a Facebook account. And she wanted to be in this class, in my class. So I sat down with her, and we created an account that has nothing in it other than her name. Um, it, there's no way to communicate with her uh, on the outside. Her, she doesn't post. She doesn't use it for anything except this class. So she keeps her notifications for this class open like everybody has to. But at the end of this class, she'll simply delete her account. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so it, it's for my classes, it, it definitely is required because this is where I'm teaching out of. This is how I stay in touch yeah. with them. But we do have sections that do not require it. So I think essentially it, it comes down to the best practice, which is know who your students are and talk yes. to them and understand what their concerns are and talk to them about what those concerns are and understand how the right. two of you can come to a, a point that makes sense for both of your interests. I think I haven't yet had anybody not take it because I use Facebook. I've had some people like, like Sonia who ask me how, how can I be in the group and be on Facebook but I don't want people finding me, I don't want to be friends with people, I don't want posting and that's something that I can address and in fact in that group and here down in my groups you can see using groups for teaching I have uh, a, a screen captures as well as a screencast about how to show people how to limit that access, you know, how to create just a basic account so that they aren't um, open to the general public and also how to limit your posts. Um, I want to talk a little bit about archiving, but before I get there, I'll show you a post. If I want to write a post, um, you'll notice, well, that's my group. Let me go to my profile. 
if I want to write a post, there's a pull down menu here that I can determine who gets to see this post. And I'm I actually run my profile very professionally. I don't put anything on there. I wouldn't say in a classroom. I don't discuss anything wildly personal. So I really don't have a problem um, in terms of sharing with students and other people. But I do have lists and one of the lists I make uh, is I put all of my current students in a list called current students and I put all of my old students who friended me into a list called uh, previous students. And if for some reason I wanted to make a post that only went to my friends and to nobody else, I can use this custom. And you'll notice when it pulls up custom, hide this from. And I can list the two groups, current students, previous students. And that post will only be available to everybody else except for them. So it, there are ways, if you have a very personalized Facebook account, to prevent your students from seeing certain posts. Um, it's it's putting them in lists is actually a really good way to organize who people are in case you forget is this person one of my students or is this a professional I met at a conference so I found the lists very useful but they also are useful for um, establishing boundaries. Great. So did you want to show us the archiving? Yes. Um, with archiving there's a couple ways to archive um, I have a previous group that I have archived uh, right here and this was from last spring and the way I archived it if you look over to the right uh, where my mouse is you'll see that it says two members and, and then message. so this is this is the archiving is basically what would happen at the end of your class that's what you're showing once us my now. class is over to archive the actual class I simply take out all the members okay. and I leave in like one other administrator from the school mm -hmm. So that they, we have it in terms, in case we need to show people what we've done in it or to show student work. Mm -hmm. But uh, this is how you can archive it. This way, no one can go in and change anything. Although no one's ever done it, my first couple times I've used it, it didn't occur to me to do that. And then later, I thought, oh, I hope no one went in and deleted their posts. But they didn't. So, but this is one way of keeping it archived. Um, the other archive that I love is under messages, um, and I'm going to show you these messages here. Um, this shows my current messages, but I can also look at archived messages. So I can actually just take messages and archive them uh, by closing them out. I can, oh, that's my other one. I'm going to look at my inbox. Um, if I take messages, you'll see there's an X, and it gives me the option to archive. So I can actually go into my archive folders. What's lovely about these messages um, let me see if I can show you a message of Nancy. She gave me permission. So it has the history of our entire communication from the very first message we ever had uh, all the way up to the current conversation that we were having last night. So nice. I can actually keep in one place all of the communication I've had with the student. Now this communication occurs in private messaging, chat messaging, uh, group chat messaging, any type of Facebook communication I have with the student thing, it goes oh, right over here to my messages file. Mm -hmm. So it, it doesn't matter if I'm on a group chat with other students, her, her part of the conversation goes into her messages and if she messages me from her phone using the messenger feature, it still goes right into our regular. Beautiful. So all the proof of your interactions with every student are all exactly. completely preserved. And then once my class is over, I can go through and archive each one of those people, and that way I don't have to have them in my in my inbox at all times. Okay. Gotcha. And I know some people had questions about the accessibility of Facebook. Um, obviously, as a multi-billion dollar industry, they're very uh, interested in making sure that everybody on this planet is using Facebook. So uh, they certainly have gone to great lengths to make it accessible and in fact I had a visually impaired student uh, last semester and they have an, there's a link where they can click and get an HTML version of the Facebook uh, and that way they can put it right through the screen readers oh. and I do have in here a link to the different uh, places in Facebook where they have all of their uh, options as well as um, their uh, procedures um, yeah 
and actually we can preview that. I love this feature. They have a preview feature. So somebody using Facebook that does not have any of the Microsoft um, documents can just click on preview and it pulls it up in a side tab. And here you can see there's some different articles that I've posted in there about accessibility. Great. And links. And it does this, by the way, that preview for any of the Microsoft um, software, whether it's the Power, uh, PowerPoint or Word or Excel uh -huh. or PDFs, actually. Uh, anything that you put into the files will have that preview option, and it just opens in a second tab. Great. So, Deborah, could you um, could you show us the the group that you have set up? If there's anyone viewing this who would be interested in kind of, you know, playing with a Facebook group, I understand that you've set up actually the the using groups for teaching group, which mm -hmm. is a way. Are, are, can we transition over to that now and just show that real quick and wrap things sure. up? Sure. It, it this is it right here. The using oh, groups for teaching it's in front of me. I didn't realize that's where we were. <laughs> No, no, no worries. Um, so this is this is the second generation of what was originally my cyber class, and then turned into I renamed it so it was a little more obvious what it was. Um, this is the group. Okay. And what I have in the group, anytime I find something new or I update my documents, you'll see it there, um, and then uh, resources. But mostly, what you what I get is I have people who are uh, posting questions. Uh, about different elements and you can search that as well you can go into search and search a topic and it will pull up uh, different posts that already address it but the most useful area will probably be the files and that's where you can see the list of different suggestions and um, and resources that I found for teachers and then under photos um, I have my screencast on how to so you would just hover over this with a mouse and it will bring up, you can say, the scene by feature, which, by the way, I think is an amazing feature for teachers because when notifications go out to students about something you posted and they click on the world to open it, to take a look at it, it captures their name and time. So it oh. actually shows teachers that students saw this, which I think is really powerful. Um, so, but I, it walks you through how, what, how, are, how to archive and how to archive your posts and your messages, how to get them back. So if someone viewing this video wanted to become a member of this group, this Using Groups for Teaching group in mm -hmm. Facebook, what would they do? They would just go find it, Using Groups for Teaching, and then it says join this group and you click on it and then I'll get a message and I'll bring you in. So they go, okay. they go to Facebook.com, they log into their account, and then up in that search box at the top, they just mm -hmm. enter Using Groups for Teaching and they'd find it. Correct. Okay, great. And then if they have any other questions, they can just look for me, Profe Lemon, and I'll be happy to put them in there. I had it open for a while, it's just open, but sometimes you get people who are trying to sell things yeah that are, that are I, I know how in. that goes <laughs> yeah so I thought yeah I think I'm gonna have to make it close so you can see the group and and then I'll, I'll I then I just put you in right away well that's a great resource and I I will say thank you on behalf of I know many people who will be excited about joining that and um learning from you and and sharing all that you've learned as you've taught with Facebook so um Thank you, Deborah. Thanks for sharing your, your great strategies with us, and um, I really appreciate it.